How do bullion dealers actually make money? Now, I'm not just talking about the semantics of buying and selling coins, but the inner workings of a bullion dealer and how they actually account for things, make money, and continue to make money as a business. And what can we as individuals learn from that to help us with our own stacking journeys? Everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Now in today's video I want to talk about bullion dealers and specifically about some of the ways that they make money and how it actually works because there's a lot of misconceptions about bullion dealers and how they rake it in hand over fist and they just make so much money from the sale of bullions with the premiums on top of the coins themselves and in some situations that's very true that's very correct but there are different ways of approaching being a dealer and I think there's a lot that we as individuals can learn certainly if we're in the market for doing a little bit of coin flipping buying coins and selling if you do not know making a little bit of cash on the side there's a lot of different accounting tips and tricks and just general ways to work it uh, that a lot of people don't necessarily think about so I thought in today's video it'd be an interesting topic to talk about now I am not a financial advisor it's very important for you all to remember I'm just a guy who likes to talk about shiny things here on YouTube so a lot of what I'm saying is of course kind of theoretical I have you know no inside knowledge as to how any big dealers around the world do their books do their accounting and do their sort of selling and how they make their money I do hate these eagle tubes sometimes but anyway uh, so from that perspective I'm just here talking I'm not giving financial advice so if you're going to go and take any financial decisions having watched this video they're yours and yours alone now in a nutshell being a bullion dealer sounds like a really good thing you can buy silver you probably have preferential rates from mints and you buy it at a time when the silver prices are low and then you sell it at a huge premium and you make a huge large sum of cash and that sounds all fantastic doesn't it and in some cases that will be the case you can and you have probably seen dealers putting on really high premiums on some silver uh, and making a mint I mean, so there's a reason why the mints are called mints they literally will mint money and uh, create the money uh, but bullion dealers are somewhat beholden in a way to the mints themselves because they will of course be uh, buying their stock predominantly from the mints directly and it's not as profitable as you might think. Yes, there are misconceptions out there that you, as a dealer, will buy your silver at spot price from a, from a mint and you'll sell it at 30, 40, 50% premium, depending on the type of coin. Uh, if it's an eagle, for example, at the moment, dropping coins all over the place. If it's a US eagle at the moment, those are very sought after and you can get some pretty high premiums on them and you make a lot of money as a dealer. And in a nutshell, that's kind of the business model. You buy cheap and you sell higher. That is ultimately how any business should work. You should be able to make a profit on the items that you are buying. However, there's a bit of a problem with a bullion related business. That's all fine and well if what you're buying and selling has a very fixed price. Like if you're buying and selling a TV and it's a particular model of a TV, you kind of know the market price on that. Yeah, the market price will drop over time as new models come out. But generally speaking, everybody's going to be selling something at the same price. But more importantly, the price doesn't fluctuate on a daily basis. Metals fluctuate on a daily basis. So as a dealer, or as even as an individual, you know, at the end of the day, in this video, we're relating it back to how we as individuals can learn from the big players out there what do they do and how do they do it so essentially what the dealers will do is they will have a large stock of, go of coins silver gold whatever metals they sell they will have that large stock they'll have bought that in and then they will sell it and they buy it in obviously at a certain price now if the metal prices change for the better and the price of silver goes up then of course you can sell your coins at a higher price even more so that you paid for them and you get this really nice little profit. However, it does, of course, work the other way. Even in small market shifts, you can somehow see if you buy for a bit bullion dealer, you buy 5,000 ounces of silver and there's a 50 pence or 50 cents ounce change in silver price downwards. That's quite a hefty potential liability. And because of in normal times anyway, the, the ratio, or not the ratios, the percentage markups being really very tidy and thin on certain products, you know, it can completely kind of wipe out where you are so one of the ways that bullion dealers and in fact most businesses out there just outside of gold and silver as well will run is that they will have their 
stock and then when they sell it they will replace the exact same stock at that time thereby locking in the profits or indeed the losses but if it's a loss you are buying again at a lower price from where you originally purchased your original stock and it's a really it's a very different way of looking at things. Certainly it's one that I've been coming to grips with as a manufacturer of silver products. So when, for example, I buy the silver to pour things, you know, I'll make a certain amount of profit on the item that I eventually have and make and sell. And that's great, but it's really only a paper profit until I actually go and buy the same amount of silver once again, the same amount of raw material once again, to actually lock in that profit. If I did not do that, I would then be beholden to the metal market's prices. Now, yes, that can go up and you can make even more cash. But of, of course, actually in that situation, if the metal prices go up, you actually end up making less cash overall because it costs you more to replace the same amount of stock as you had at the start of that whole process. Now, for a dealer dealing in literally millions and millions of pounds and dollars worth of silver and gold each month, that can be a pretty huge liability. So what dealers will have, and this is kind of my, this is where we delve into more of a theoretical economic kind of model of how a business or how a sort of precious metal business comes to be and, and runs. So think of it like this. If you're Joe blogs on the street and you think, I'm going to start myself a precious metal dealership. This is, I'm going to buy coins and I'm going to sell them. So you have, of course, a business that you want to start up and you want to get some stock. So you buy a bunch of stock. Let's just represent that with this line of silver here. This has cost you £100,000, £100,000, whatever denomination currency you want to put it in. That's your initial stock of goods for your business. Now, when you sell some of those goods, of course, you're going to want to continue on making money or at least trading as a business. It takes a long time sometimes for businesses to recoup that. You know, you've put £100,000 into stock. But let's say, very fortunately, that you managed to sell all of these or these £100,000 worth of stock for $110,000. You've then got $110,000 in your hand, in your pocket. It's there. You've done it. You've made some profit. Well done. However, if you want to continue trading, of course, you need to reinvest that cash. So you take the £100,000 that you originally had again, and that kind of stays in the business. And you basically just roll over the profits. So you take your 10000 and you buy some more stock. And then you've, still, you've got this kind of bank of stock still. You, you've rebought all of that £100,000 worth originally. So you've put £100,000 in, you've you know, spent £100,000, you then get £110,000 back. You then rebuy £110,000 worth of metal. You have a little bit more metal. Now, conversely, if the metal prices had gone the other way and you lose out a little bit, you have still £100,000 worth of metal, but it's a little less in terms of that stock. And generally speaking, the way that the markets work is they will have their ups, they will have their downs. And if it's very unfortunate that you get a cycle of downs just as you start your business, of course, your original kind of investment will start to sort of slowly dwindle over time. But eventually it will start recouping because let's say you've bought that £100,000 worth of raw material to get you started and then the silver price goes up as you are selling that 100000 and you get your £120,000 worth invested back in. You can then roll it over and roll it over and roll it over. But the only way to secure that profit margin there is to actually buy the silver once again. And then the idea is you keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. And of course, the bigger the budgets and the bigger the customer base and the more that you can sell and the faster volumes that you can sell will give you bigger returns over time. And eventually the idea is you've then got your £100,000 original investment that you can at some point take out of the business. You can just go, right, do you know what? That was a director's loan. The business is now sustainable. We've got a large enough capital of the stock that's rolling that we can look, in, look after that and get it all sorted. Or you just keep that in there as that kind of stock for the business. And it's almost like an investment in silver itself. So a lot of these dealers will have this kind of initial chunk of change that they've put into a business that they are keeping almost as that kind of rainy day fund. And that's a really, really important thing that we can all learn from that. Now, of course, that's huge like macroeconomics. And you know, there's loads of different, different accounting principles that you can do about when you look to lock in prices, when you buy things, when you sell things, how they you know, are counted on your books. Of course, there's going to be lots of different things like overheads to factor in and dealers will, of course, have all of these different uh, things to deal with, uh, including customer returns, faulty products. If you have 
you know, fakes and, and false bars and coins go through your books and you've got to sort out all those problems, storage, security, internet, um, website costs, you know, all of these things add up. So when you take this in perspective, you know, somebody like a, a small fledgling uh, coin flipper, for example, and that's kind of like how I see myself as well, like at the start anyway, uh, you know, I was coin flipping, but with hand poured silver, I'd buy a certain amount of raw silver in, I would then sell it, and then I would immediately go and I would buy again, basically what the money I'd come in in every single month. And for the first, like, well, still, even to this day, I've been going four years now, I still roll over the money each time because I know that if I don't lock in prices at a specific time for a specific product, I'm very beholden to the swings in the metal prices if I want to continue trading. Now, of course, if I want to just shut up shop and stop altogether, then yeah, I've got all this raw material that I've locked in and it's fantastic because you've, you could basically realize all your profits in one go if you sell all of that raw material stock. So for a lot of people to think that bullion dealers are like swimming in cash, they have huge cash reserves and they are just rich and like Scrooge McDuck rolling around in there swimming pool full of gold and silver um, it's not always the case you know it really isn't it's it's about how you do the accounting and how you actually look at that in the perspective of what you want to achieve with the business as well uh, i think there's a lot of different ways of looking at it and of course it's you know it's going to be down to financing to a certain degree if you've got the capital to invest initially into that business or whether you're on finance loans and so on uh, you know there's a lot of people who always say borrowing money to buy silver is never a good idea when you're a business, that's actually not the most horrendous idea in the world. One of the most amazing benefits of this, and I always said this to Mrs. Backyard Bullion as well, is if this doesn't work, if we don't sell any of our poured silver, uh, you know, the assets that we have, the raw material assets are still worth money. If you were doing a business where you were taking plastic beads and making plastic form toys or, you know, molded plastic toys or whatever, uh, if you bought hundred thousand pounds worth of plastic, that's not going to be easily sold at the same kind of price that you bought it from. Of course, with silver, there's a swing uh, and you buy at a certain price. If I wanted to liquidate all of the raw material silver that I have, yeah, you're probably not going to get the exact kind of premium point that you put back in. But ultimately, it's still really quite valuable and you don't lose a great deal. Whereas a lot of businesses out there take this big gamble on this initial investment. They go, yeah, I'm going to have to stick with this for 5, 15 years to get that money to be able to take out of the business altogether and have my original original investment back. It's it's a true investment in you know yourself as a business. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it and, and ways to account for things. And that's just kind of my one of I think that's one of the ways that you can do it. And it's very going to be very different for different things. So what can we learn as individuals if we are in the market to do a bit of buying and selling ourselves? Now, I have absolutely no problems with people doing coin flipping. I've done it many times before. In fact, some of these that we've got here on the table, the world of dragon coins, I specifically would import from the US. Uh, despite having to pay import taxes and everything, it would still end up yielding me about a pound fifty, one pound, two pounds, depending on where I sold it, return per ounce of silver, which is which is great. It's fantastic. And you know, most dealers out there would love to see that kind of return. You know, t two pounds on a at the time, fifteen pound or with tax 18 pound coin was, you know, a really good deal. It's, it's like 20, oh, no, it's 12% 12, 12 return. Most dealers operate a lot less than that on silver. So that's a good kind of uh, example for me. You know, I'd taken, I'd spend, you know, 600 pounds on a roll of, or a couple of rolls of 20 of these World of Dragon coins. I'd then sell them subsequently, get in, you know, 690, 700 pounds, whatever it would be. And then because this was a series, I'd take that cash and I'd roll it up into the next series and I'd get more of the second or third or fourth or fifth release of that series and then when it came to the end of the series i had this sort of surplus of coins which i kept for myself and this was essentially the sort of small model that i've got going as i've explained in this video this was like this is the original initial investment minus a few other little bits and bobs and you know this is now in a way kind of free silver i suppose because the money that we earned flipping all of the others, including some of the coppers, has ended up kind of paying for those. But it's still an asset that I'm holding. So I still haven't actually, you know, I haven't made profit on them yet because all of my initial capital is locked up in there still. Does that make sense? So you, you've got to do it in a certain way to account for things. And of course, that's the most important thing for you, depending on what you want to achieve with coin flipping. If you're just after a little bit of extra pocket money, 
then you need to sell all of your stock. And then to what end? You know, you've got to ask yourself, what, what are you going to do with the cash? If you want to then continue selling, you've got to roll that cash up into more items. And to really get it kind of flowing like a snowball, you can't just do it on, well, you can. You can just do it on one coin. But if you only reinvest the profits and you make two pounds profit on that, you're not going to be able to buy very much silver to resell it. So, you, you know, you've got to kind of take a bit of a gamble to get started. So business is not easy. That's kind of the general message here. And there's this misconception that you can just sell a lot of coins and bars and silver and gold and whatever and have this kind of really nice cash cow, this profit coming in. I haven't even talked about all of the additional sort of business admin side of things like, of course, if you're a you know, limited company, if you're a, uh, you know, a registered business that you've got obviously taxes to pay, tax returns to do, accountants to you know, look at and or whether you're going to do the accounts yourself. Uh, you know, I've always been very much a fan of doing accounts yourself and trying to learn as much as possible. But there's always a certain point where your skill and expertise that you can learn is always limited compared with the skill and expertise of others. So it's very very interesting that there's a lot of misconceptions out there around the big boy bullion dealers and how they are raking in cash and how they actually probably have got a lot of cash but it's actually not necessarily as much profit as you might imagine. So it's a really interesting way of thinking about it and I know that it's going to be different for loads of different people and different companies and the ways that one will look to account things and write off losses and all of that as well is you know, it, it's just fascinating to me, I think, but it can also be quite dangerous. I do want to finish this with a sort of a slight warning. So the illusion of profit, I think, is the final thing to look at here. A lot of businesses, a lot of companies around the world, precious metal or not, will have potentially made a lot of money. But again, a lot of that money is reinvested into stock and it can then become a liability. Now with gold and silver that is a mitigated liability because it is of course valuable in of, in of itself but as I explained with the plastic scenario there a lot of companies will roll over money into other things. So the same applies to gold and silver despite the fact the risk is less if you are rolling things up always do it within your own means. If you're just a fledgling coin Buyer. Don't go and invest that £100,000 worth of your life savings, the only money that you've got in this world, because the markets are volatile and if they go up, if they go down, or if you suffer some untoward customers ripping you off or some losses because of the postal services or something like that goes wrong, you can be risking an awful lot of cash and it's not a get rich, get rich quick scheme, not get rich. Anyway, I have rambled on long enough about this subject, which I think is fascinating and I find really interesting. And I would love to hear from you if you are a coin seller, if you are a dealer, if you are an accountant, if you disagree with the things that I've supposed here in this video, I'd love to hear from you. But I do think that's a model by which a lot of dealers will have to work by because if they don't buy what they sell on a monthly, weekly, daily basis even, then they will not secure their profits, or even their losses, and it can spiral out of control. And if they don't, they are essentially gambling on the precious metal markets. And I know for a fact that a large number of businesses don't like to gamble. The security of stability is one of the most important things that any business will say. That is my thoughts on the subject. If you've enjoyed this ramble, then put a thumbs up on this. And if you're a member of the BYB Rambling Society, then I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section. Always gives me a giggle to hear if you're a rambler. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you've not done so already with the notification bell on if you want to get notifications. Otherwise, that's it for me. Have a fantastic week ahead and we'll see you on the next one. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.